Hi everyone, um, I am Suzanne Blake and I work as a history teacher at Pennycook High School. My session is on what exactly is effective feedback and basically how do we provide effective feedback that reduces workload and engages students. Um, background, um, I've been teaching since 2005 and I've been working in Middle Orient since 2012. I worked overseas um, in Dubai, New Zealand and Australia um, early on in my career and then came back to work in Scotland. Um, I'm trained to teach history, English and modern studies. Um, so marking is um, a big thing for me. And so this is why I decided to do a practitioner inquiry on effective feedback um, because I needed to find a way to be able to manage my workload, make it effective and basically re reduce my marking was, 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 a, was a big part of this but the main part obviously is to ensure that the feedback that we're giving to kids is effective and that they can actually learn from it and progress from it and have success from it. The next bullet point you might find a little bit strange but um, pupils well-being is at the heart of absolutely everything I do and so when it comes to feedback, I am always thinking about how a child is going to react. Feedback. Um, there's a few of my favourite teaching quotes sort of no significant learning takes place in a classroom without a significant relationship. If you do not have a strong bond with a pupil, I genuinely believe no matter what feedback or whatever format you choose to give the feedback in, it's not going to register because you need that relationship for a child to be able to trust you in order to um, read and act on feedback. Um, education is relationship because um, I genuinely don't believe that we're in the education business. I, I believe that we are in the people business and a large part of what we do is encouraging people to put themselves out there, um, make sure that they are learning, um, that they are confident in their learning. And so for me, it's all about the relationship and largely I mean I love my job but teaching and learning should bring joy um you know how powerful would our world be if we had kids who were not afraid to take risks and who were not afraid to think and I think we've all experienced this year um in particular the impact of COVID we've got a lot of very anxious kids um I've certainly got a lot of senior students who are not prepared to put themselves out there and answer questions because of the impact of COVID and the impact of being out of a classroom. So this may seem a bit strange to some people, but as far as I'm concerned, the relationship between the teacher and the pupil is probably more important than the feedback that you are giving the student because there needs to be trust for a student to be able um, to feel confident, um, to listen to feedback, act on feedback and try and improve their work. Um, Absolutely. Um, favourite person on TED Talks is uh, Rita Pearson. Um, I find her one of the most inspirational teachers I've ever listened to. Um, and I just love her quote, as I said, you know, how powerful would our world be if we had kids who were not afraid to take risks, who were not afraid to think, and who had a champion. Every child deserves a champion. And it's an adult who insists they become the best that they can possibly be. And that's our job. And we do that through effective feedback and effective relationships. Um, it's so, so important for the ones that struggle, the ones that are scared to ask for help, the ones that don't think they're worthy enough. And so that relationship is so important. So when you are giving feedback, you've got to make sure that even if the work the student has completed is not to the standards you were looking for or they've maybe missed something. You have to make sure that that feedback is going to make that child feel empowered and know that they can do it rather than them coming away feeling really deflated and feeling like they're not good enough and feeling like they're an absolute failure. So um, it is so, so important that all feedback is positive and enthuses students and makes makes them want to um, improve their work and do well for them and obviously also for us. Um, the relationship part, obviously, as you can see, is huge for me. 
has to be nurtured, has to be developed. Um, I do that largely by simple things like making sure I say hello to every child that walks into my class. It means I say hello 30 times. Kids find it funny. Um, but it's an important part about building a relationship with the people. I make sure I comment on a piece of work from every single child in a class at least once a week. Um, you know, just smiling, just, you know, asking if kids are okay, asking about their, their social lives, their personal lives, um, just building on the relationship so that there is um, confidence when it comes to acting on feedback. Um, respect is a huge a huge thing. I, I never shout. I respect all students in my classes. If I make a mistake, I'm the first person to put my hand up and say, oh, sorry, got that wrong. I'm dyslexic with double letters. So if I'm writing something on the board and I can't spell it, I have no qualms about turning around and saying, could somebody tell me how to spell this? Um, because I think it's really important that the kids know that, you know, we don't know everything. So um, these are all sort of different ways in which I, I use to, to build relationships um, with students. Um, I use parents evening as a big one to build positive relationships. I don't believe in any negativity at parents evening. I believe it should always be positive. There's all this constructive feedback, but once you've had a positive interaction with a parent, initially, they're more than happy to listen to some constructive um, feedback. But if you go on in there and you talk about behaviour and lack of effort and, you know, making out that this child is, is not, you know, fit to be in your classroom, um, it's you're never going to have a relationship with that child. So you've got to make sure that there is mutual respect between um, both yourself and the students. And that is the first step to um, effective feedback because you need the kids to respect you if you want them to act upon what you are saying. Now, the reason, as I've said uh, already, um, why I chose to focus on this. Um, and I started this way back um, in 2013 um, when I was working at St David's. And um, it was basically because pupils were not progressing. I was writing loads and loads of feedback. They weren't using their feedback. And I was I felt like all I ever did was mark. I was marking, like I'd marking coming out of my ears. So I felt that I needed to find a way in which to provide feedback, make it effective and time manageable because that was a huge issue um, for me. And I discussed this in detail with my third years at the time and we were talking about ways in which we could um, work together to identify positive ways to provide feedback. And um, we came up, and this was largely the, the students' idea, we came up with a traffic light tracking system where the students would um, complete the one of the six different types of questions that um, is in the National Fly History paper, and then they would get their marks out of some are worth uh, four marks, five marks, six marks, and nine marks. So they would get their marks, and then we would work on a traffic light system. So the this, um, they would have the date the topic and then their mark and then what they would do is they would colour in the box either red, amber or green or they got to choose whatever colours they wanted because sometimes I think it's good to come away from the connotations of red so I was like you choose your three colours um, most of them went for traffic lights because they, they liked the idea of traffic lights um, and the idea being that as they completed the questions they should see where they were doing really well, so that was always like really positive, and, they, and you know it was a way for me to go around and say, "Look at how well you're doing with your evaluate the usefulness questions." And um, but then they would have obviously amber and red, and they'd be like, "Right, so this is where we need to work. This is what we need to focus on. How are we going to focus on it?" And it really motivated them because they really wanted to see their progression logs improve. And I mean, it was a visual representation of their success. I encourage them to take photographs of their sheets to send pictures home to parents because I always think it's important to get them to celebrate success with parents. Um, and 
it worked brilliantly. Um, I love, there's a lot of stickers involved as well because kids do love stickers, even in high school. Um, but it was a chance for them to really see how they were progressing and see their success, and they loved it. So we had one for each of the skills, and then for higher history, I decided to bring this in um, for the essay writing. So these are all the different elements of essay writing. And so the idea being that every essay they produced, they were able to see, okay, this is what I'm doing really well in. This is what I need to work on. Again, using the same traffic light system with the idea being that they would be able to look at the sheet, identify their own targets, identify what they wanted to work on and hopefully see the progression. And again, even though they're seniors, I was encouraging them to take photographs of their progress and um, send it home because it's really, really important that they're sharing their successes with their parents as well. Um, it also really helped with learner conversations with the kids because you, you, they could sit down with their tracking sheet in front of them and it was very clear for them to be able to say, well, I can do this, I can do that. But I'm, I'm really struggling, we'll say, with analysis plus or evaluation, which is the harder skills. And that way we were able to work together. They had the vocabulary um, and it just made things a lot easier for them. I've had a lot of um, silent learner conversations. So with utilising these sheets, it really, really helped. Um, as it was a practitioner inquiry, I was obviously reviewing it um, as I went. And the kids did like it. They really enjoyed seeing their progress. They liked to taking the photos and sending them home. Um, but what I realised was I was still doing a lot of the marking. I hadn't actually reduced my marking needs. Um, and there was still students who were not acting on, on their sort of feedback. And so... I thought, right, well, a really good thing would be now that we've built some confidence is that we get them to sort of self-assess their work. And um, bricks, I decided were probably going to be the best options. And so the students would be able to understand the requirements and then check off their own work to make sure that they'd included it. Now, my first attempt, I was initially very proud of it. Um, but it was an absolute disaster because you can see there is far too much on there. Now, my thought process had been, if you look to the left, you'll see it's a pupil self-assessment sheet. And then on the right, it's the teacher feedback sheet. So the idea being when the pupil handed in their um, essay, they would self-assess it. And then I would use my own um, sheet to mark it. And then I would be able to highlight on that sheet what it was that they needed to do if they hadn't done it. And I was like, well, this is great. This is going to reduce all the comments that I need to write for marking. I thought I'd cracked it. Absolutely not, because it was far too wordy. It was very overwhelming for um, the students. Um, some were able to access it and some felt that it was a good um, start to self-assessing um, their own work. Um, the issues that the students said um, were that they didn't really know how to go about improving whilst I was telling them what it was that they were missing out by highlighting it on that sheet. They were like, well, I'm not really sure how to go, go about, about so using it properly and so a lot of kids just ignored it, even though I requested them to hand it in with every essay. A lot of them just ignored it. So I had, I knew at that point I had to go back to the drawing board and start again. Um, so I did quite a lot of professional reading on it um, because I was, at this point, I was teaching. I had um, a National 5 history and English class and a higher history and English class. So I had a lot of marking and I needed to find a way to... Um, streamline that marking and make sure that I wasn't shortchanging the kids because it's not their problem that I had a huge marking load. I needed to make sure that what I did was efficient but also effective. And so um, this was sort of based on um, Hattie's the key question um, stage of um, my practice and inquiry and it involved 
showing the kids sort of how they were doing, so where they were at, um, where were they going, and how they were going to get there, and whether they were on or off track. This was at the point where um, Midlothian was moving to using tracking reports um, on a regular basis throughout the year. You'll have noticed I was working at St David's. You'll have seen that I was working at Las Vegas at that point, and now you'll see I'm now at Penny Creek. So I have done my share around the schools in... Um, middle of the end. Um, but this is probably been the most effective feedback sheet that I've ever used um, and the kids love it. So as you can see, they'll complete an essay, they get this feedback sheet back, they get how they're doing, so their marks for each of the individual elements, as you can see on the left hand side there. The where am I going, so that is where I highlight, you know, what have they not done, what do they, you know, need to be doing in their next essay. And then the key point is, how will I get there? And this is the part that seems so simple now to me, but actually was the part that the kids were struggling with the most, is we give them feedback all the time, but a lot of them don't actually know how to utilise the feedback. And so this was me sort of pointing them in the direction, saying, right, well, for example... Um, as you can see, you know, revising the course content to ensure essays contain relevant and detailed knowledge. Um, a very simple point, but a point that, you know, needs to be made sometimes when students aren't um, making enough detailed knowledge points within their essays. The next one, as you can see, I should make use of the model answers we've created in class to help write future essays. Um, I won't read you all the points, but it just gives them an idea of how um, they can improve. One um, that has been really helpful is um, that I should identify keywords and phrases in the question and continually refer back to these with every knowledge and analysis um, point. And that has been a really effective one because what we get them to do is actually highlight these keywords and then they can see that they've included them. Um, we have seen significant progress within the department with the students using these um, feedback sheets. And sort of when we've asked the kids, you know, what, what is it about these? They just says it's, it's really clear. They know what they need to do um, to achieve their targets. Um, they really like the fact that, you know, when we sit down and have learner conversations, that they can articulate, you know, They'll say, oh, well, I, I, I did really well with my knowledge and I did really well with um, my introduction, but I'm still just not getting there with my conclusion. Um, and so I, now I know I need to go and use this to do this so that I can get a good conclusion in my next essay. Um, and as you can see, like along the bottom, they get their overall mark, their grade, what their target grade is for the year and whether they are on or off track to achieve it. And... Um, the great thing about that is they know where they're at all year. They know exactly um, what their progress is. The reports are not a surprise to them when they get the reports. And as they get tracking reports, they get three tracking reports a year um, at Penny Geek. And so before this report goes home, they know exactly what it's going to say. Um, and it has really motivated them um, in terms of being off track they're like, right, well, what can I do to get on track before you write my next report so that my parents, you know, see positive rather than negative. Um, and so, yeah, no, the, it's been really, really positive, this type of feedback. And the great thing about it is it doesn't take a lot of time. I mean, I, I have 30 kids in my higher class. So in terms of writing feedback, I mean, you may be talking like three or four hours to mark a class set. With these feedback sheets, I can get through a class set in half that time, which is a huge sort of time efficiency saving. Um, but more than anything, the most important part is it's effective for the kids. Um, one thing, though, that um, myself and my colleagues sort of have reviewed is since COVID, kids have sort of fallen by the wayside. They'd, they'd got really used to using these sheets. We use them in National 5 as well. We have National 5 versions. Um, but we are finding them a bit apathetic. So when it comes to all work on improvement, and so what 
um, we have started um, to get them to do um, in terms of improvement is we get them to write um, at least two targets at the top of their next essay. So the targets that they've been given on these feedback sheets and they put them, write them at the top of the piece of paper for their next essay. They write their essay and then they have to highlight in one colour, one target highlight, another um, target, another colour, and then they have to highlight within the essay where they think they've achieved their targets. So, um, sorry, I forgot that I had my National 5 examples here for you to see. So this is a piece of, um, you know, the great thing about Google Classroom is you can pull things off and people um, don't know that you're using their work. Um, but you'll see that we set the targets at the top there and then you'll see that it's been marked and you'll see that it's actually um, had a, a great impact on the student at hand here. So they've actually achieved everything that they needed to, to do in their targets. So when they get their next um, feedback sheet back, they're going to get, you know, they've achieved their targets, lots of praise. This is where I would be encouraging um, taking photographs again and sending them home um, to parents just because I think it's so important to celebrate their success. I go into quite a lot of detail when I see success like this where the students make a real point of pointing it out and saying how impressed I am and how proud they should be because it's, it's a huge thing when they put themselves out there and they try and they actually achieve their success. Um, so this part is quite new but so far, the the sort of results of it have, have actually been quite phenomenal. And because um, kids don't like it when you sit down and say, well, here's this essay and my feedback and here's this next essay and my feedback and you made the same mistakes. So uh, maybe I'm going to have to get in touch with mum or mum or dad or parents or carers um, and sort of ask why we're not making the progress. Um, but by doing it this way, you are um, giving them complete and utter ownership for their learning. Um, the sort of final review that we um, made um, and discussed in detail with pupils after the first few essays, um, they were seeing excellent results. We still used the traffic light tracking sheets, so they were able to see the improvements much quicker on the traffic light tracking sheets. Um, we're getting excellent results from day one. Um, we've got confident pupils, which is uh, amazing to see. That, for me, is the best part of it all, is they've, they've got confidence in what they're doing. Um, I'm not going to lie, I have a reduced marking load, which means I have more time to spend on work for pupils within the class. So an example being, um, I've been making what we call equity writing frames for um, students who are dyslexic, um, who are autistic, who struggle with the strict structures that the SQA use within history, within National 5 and within higher. Um, and so I've been able to put my time elsewhere. And these writing frames have enabled students who are sitting on sort of Ds and Cs, and they've been able to move themselves up to Bs and As. So whilst it looks a little bit selfish that I've put reduced marking load in there, it has meant that I've had far more time to be able to concentrate on the students and make sure that I'm providing for all of their needs. I'm sure every teacher who's listening will be agreeing when I say that um, since we've returned from COVID, um, the kids' needs seem to have just exploded. And I feel like, you know, when I started teaching 17 years ago, you'd maybe have one or two kids who were potentially dyslexic in your class. Um, this afternoon, I'm completing a, a, a part of a prelim and I literally have half of my class out of the room for triple A's in terms of separate accommodation, ICT, readers and scribes, etc. cetera. So um, that extra time isn't so that I can leave school at four o'clock and get myself home. It just means that I'm able to concentrate on pupils and identify different ways in which to support pupils. And so... Um, it has been such a benefit for me. Um, I have no doubt this will change again and probably again and again. I, I tend to review things with each year group to see 
um, if things are working for them? Is there anything else that we can potentially do um, to make sure that their um, feedback is effective and that they do progress and that they do get the grades that they are capable of? Um, but yeah, that is my um, presentation on effective feedback. But I would go back and reiterate again that before we even start thinking about feedback, it's the relationships that matter the most. And to be able to have these conversations with the kids, with these feedback sheets, etc., you need the positive relationship. You need the kids to know that you're on their side and that you are their champion. And so it's really important to know that that comes hand in hand with feedback. Otherwise, it will never be effective. Thanks for listening. Um, anybody got any questions that they would like to ask?